subscribe and like our channel if you like what you hear and see. As May Dragons, Origins. Note, the first minutes of the video explain what a Slavic dragon is. Skip to the stories if you'd like. As Mays, throughout the centuries and across Slavic lands, they were a symbol of mystery, courage, and heroism, but they were also feared beings. According to traditional Slavic tales, some animals can evolve into a dragon when they reach a certain age, like 40 or 100 years. As May could evolve from a snake or a rooster, a turtle, a fish, or a ram, it can disguise itself as a piece of jewelry, like a bracelet or a pafti belt. A peacock's feather, a mirror left on the road, a bouquet of wild herbs and flowers. Some claim to have seen it, flying in the shape of a weaving loom's yarn beam. A dragon could be born as a human child as well. There's a widespread belief that if a child is born with tiny wings under its armpits, with snakeskin, with too many or too few eyes, hands, heads, or any mutation at all resembling reptilian features, then that child is certain to be a Zmei dragon child. Such children are born from the love of a mortal woman and a Zmei. Old Slavic midwives instruct little Zmeis must be dressed with a special shirt immediately after their birth, if their mothers wish them to stay human, not fly away, and become the village's protectors. This special shirt must be sewn by a group of unmarried maidens. As adults, Azme dragons would bend weather to their will. Their duty was to protect the crops and help farmers with the earth's fertility. Their arch enemy was the Ala, or Hala, a reptile deity which brings hail in harsh weather that was usually believed to be the Zmei's sister. Besides Ala, other malevolent dragon-like creatures were the Ajdaya and Lamia. You'll hear more about those creatures in one of our next videos, so stay tuned! Zmeis were master protectors of their native geographical locations from pests like these and also from foreign Zmei rivals who sought to steal from their neighbors, much like humans. Zmei could be the lord of a country, a region, a crop field, household, water reservoir, like a well, a tree, even a horse carriage sometimes. There are several terms for this Zmei profession. Stupanin, Sabia, in Bulgaria and Macedonia. Zduhac, Vetrovnik, in Serbia. The word Zmei in Serbian comes from the word snake, Zmija, but also might come from the word earth, Zemla. The title of this dragon creature varies depending on region and country, but often bears the same word root. We have Zlina, Zmei, or Zmejko in Bulgaria, Zmei in Serbia and Bosnia, Zmej or Zmech in Macedonia, Zmek in Czechia, Zmi for Poland and Ukraine, Kachak, Pozoi or Zdrokum in Croatia, Dalmatia specifically, Zmi in Russia, Ljubak in the Smolensk region, in Slovenia, Arak, Ndrak, Duhovin, Duhovina, Duhovinka. In Slovakia, Kralhada. In some regions, the name Zmai can be a synonym for other dragon types, such as the Ajdaya, Ala, Hala, or Lamia, instead of having the later three as its arch nemeses. Writers from the Croatian seaside region use Zmai Ognini, fire dragon, and Zmai Pakleni, hell dragon, to describe the devil. In old folk tradition, the name Zmai Vatreni, again fire dragon, is a synonym for meteors which can be seen flying during the night. In certain regions of Bulgaria, tales depict Zmeis as seraphim angels, emitting light and lightning, having faces and wings. In other parts of Bulgaria, around the region of Haskul, for instance, folk tell of Zmeis going off to war as actual soldiers with the regular army to do battle with the dragon protectors of the enemy nation. Some of them have been said to have been killed in the war and to have never again returned home to guard their village. Slovakia doesn't have an identical image of this May dragon, 
at least not word for word, they have the snake king, Kralhada, instead. This snake-like creature, similar to the Zmei, is alive in plenty of legends across the region of Zamagui. Besides Slovakia, the snake king or queen also exists in the folk traditions of Slovenians. The Slovenian snake king or queen is known by the role of a guardian. It mostly protects places where vast treasures are hidden, caves, dips, forests, etc. Contrary to Slovaks, Slovenians have a specific other name for the dragon, or the snake king. They call him Arak or Drak, and not only. Slovenia keeps legends of dragon children named Duhovins. A Duhovin is a child born as a snake, which sheds its skin to become human, and it's thought to inhabit western Slovenia, Notrinsko, Istria, and the Karst. Two very common things among Slavic dragons are that they are rarely evil beings and that they can breathe fire. But their most original and often mentioned trait is that they are great lovers. Lustfulness is one of their main attributes. They would pay a visit to a young widow or women who were neglected by their husbands. This May dragon would come at night as an orb of light illuminating the woman's room as bright as day or in the form of a handsome man and he'd make love to her. Young unmarried girls were also the dragon's targets and point of interest. In tales, some Zmei dragons would force girls to make love to them at any cost, sometimes leaving large black and blue bruises on the victims' bodies. Despite such cases, Slavic dragons at large are a kind of totem animal, a mythical ancestor. Many heroes of epic poems were regarded as descendants of dragons, like the Russian prince Volk of Sislavich, son of the god Veles in serpent form. His maize become sworn brothers to certain heroes in some traditional songs, Pobratimi, as they are called. In Slavic mythology, forests were the realm where the ancestors and the dragons alike would dwell, hence why his maize were seen as ancestral totems. Finally, they were imagined as living at the world's end in certain seasons of the year, where Slavic nymphs and elves lived too, the villas in Samudivas. Number 1. Bulgaria. The following is an eyewitness account from 69-year-old Maria Dimitrova from the Haskovo region of Bulgaria, who shared her story in 1983 with the researcher Valentina Ganeva. Her story has been taken from an anthology by Dr. Vikhrabaeva and her academic team of researchers, all listed in the description. The book is called Zmei, Zmeitsa, Lamia i Hala. I saw this thingy too. I was a young girl at the age of 16. We had a store and I'd went out to buy olives. It was during Christmas fasts. There were people lined up outside exclaiming, Look how the Zmei passes by. It resembles a weaving loom's yarn beam, but with a head. Red and burning, it can't be gazed at for long. But I saw this creature, too. As soon as I did, I quickly went into the shop, since I was young and easily frightened. But people stayed and watched to see where it flew out of and where it hid itself. Nowadays, wherever there is a war and battles are being fought, that's where this maze are. There are none left here anymore. It is the Zmei dragons that first clash with each other and begin fighting instead of nations, and only then do wars in the world get announced. Now that's the way us old folk know it goes from way back when in the day. Number two, Bulgaria. This next family memory belongs to Christina Vukova, a woman from the village of Duspey, Samukov region. It tells of a clan from the town of Klisura, who were her relatives. Klisura town also had its dragons. My grandmother told me of them. So one of her relatives in Klisura, they called her Maria, was in love and had a relationship with his May. While she was on the field, 
a strong whirlwind appeared and lifted everything around, all the hay. So she hid herself in the haystack, and inside she dreamt or heard out loud someone speaking to her. Maria, come out from under there. I can't reach you. She responded, You come inside. It's very windy out there. And it answered, I cannot because of the herbs. Three stems among the straw are keeping me away. The ablinitsa. The gentian. Mm. The ablinitsa. The yellow sweet clover. The gentian. Uh, three herbs were preventing him. I might be mistaking some of their names, but there was three of them. And what happened next? The sun shone through, and she came out. My mother has told me, as she was a witness of what happened next. Mum had taken Maria to Samukov city, and there one of the sons of this grandma Maria was born, but with wings here under its arms. This big, the storyteller shows the interviewer the area of the armpits and demonstrates the size of the wings, then continues. And my mother saw them with her own eyes. He was from the Sharankovi family. He's Boris Sharankov. Probably even now, somewhere around the town of Klisura, there are still remaining members of the Sharankovi clan. And my mom would tell him, Boris, lift up your jacket. And my mom says they were this big, the wings under his arms, from the left and from the right side too. The man had little wings. The woman shows the interviewer again. Both my grandmother had told me of this, and my mother claims that she's seen this with her own eyes. She'd say, the wings were yay big. They just hang there under his arms. I know many such things. However, one can't recall everything instantaneously when asked to tell it. Number three. Macedonia. We haven't got the name of the story's author, but he or she shared it from the city of Veles, where the researcher the Etsov wrote it down. It's also an entry from the book Zmei's Meets Alamya Ihala, just as the previous two stories. Every country has its master protector, a Sebia, who guards its prosperity and abundance. This master is the Zmei dragon. And where there's a Zmei, there's also a Lamia. The Lamia, an evil female dragon, and the Zmei are brother and sister. If a small cloud appears over a land and approaches from some side, this means that the body of the Zmei is lying face down somewhere while only his soul walks among the clouds. Come hail or rain, the spot around him is dry. Božica, the wool merchant's son, was a Zmei. Uh, this was long ago. He used to have this large head, quarter of a bushel big, and these big eyes, as large as an old Turkish silver coin called Mejidia. Others say that he was marked. He didn't used to go outside, only sat at home, mostly on the balcony. When thunder roared, he'd always be stuffed in his room so nobody could see him. The storm cloud that brought the thunder would be a foreign Zmei foe who'd come to steal the abundance and prosperity of the neighboring land. And that's why the rightful Zmei master of the land confuses his opponent to protect his land's fertility. This is because Zmei dragons steal from each other. They take the wealth from one property and pour it onto another. Georgia the pepper had harvested a wondrous amount of crops from his vineyard once, and he would say that he took it from the Zmei's hand, which he'd found amid the vineyard. Number four. Macedonia. The author of this account about a dragon's birth is anonymous, but we know the story has been collected in Prilip in 2006 and written down by Marko Tsepenkov, in his work Folklore Heritage in six editions. I've heard from old women that practice midwifery that many women give birth to children with small wings under their arms, and these were Zmecheta, 
dragon infants. So they don't fly away, the women found a certain practice. One would be born with wings, and immediately they'd send for several unmarried lasses and make them cut out and sew some clothes to dress it so the little's may doesn't fly and stays its mother's child, like all other children. After several days, the wings would fall off. Another practice. The mother should not tell anyone about the child for forty days, and the little one will stay, but if she shares with the women, it would fly away. Just like the little's may of Sias did, the wife of Tushi, of the handyman from Prilep City, this is what Pere Kuzmachik, the butcher, told me about the little dragon Sia gave birth to. Pere's mum, Dina, was going to knit traditional povoynitsa bread for the baby's first clothing at Sia's, as she was a relative. She unraveled the baby to see it. Upon seeing it, she was in awe as the child had one eye and little wings under its armpits. Auntie, what have I given birth to? said Sia to Dina, a beastie or a child. It isn't a beastie, Sia, nor an angel, but God's punishment for our sins, my daughter. Surprised, Dina came back home and told her son Pere. Pere, my son, I've heard of children with wings and one eye being born, sure, but I didn't believe it. Well, today I saw that our Sia has given birth to an infant with one eye and two little wings. Is it a little Zmei, mother, said Pere, if it has wings? A baby dragon, my son. What a wonder I've seen that I have not seen in my late years. In several days' time, Dina went to Sia to see the child, but the child was gone. Sia, where is your baby? she asked. My child flew from its blanket, auntie. When Dina heard these words, she began to cross herself repetitively, and upon returning home, she shared this with Pere. The next day, Pere told me and assured me that this truly occurred. Number five. Slovenia. The following account notes a Slovenian family's experience from the mountain pass Lubeli at the Austro-Slovenian border, in particular of the village Poden by the river Kolpa. The Vžekar family in Poden once had so many snakes that the housekeeper could no longer keep track of them. They crawled all over the greenery and in the kitchen. They were found in the cooked cabbages and in the cribs of the children, although they did not do them any harm. The members of the Vzekar family went on pilgrimage, but none of it did any good. A traveler came by once. He claimed he could chase the snakes away, but only if a certain white snake was not near. All of the family members confirmed that they hadn't seen one. Some claimed that they really hadn't come across the beast before, while others say that they had but kept it a secret. Thus, the traveler started with his preparations. He went to the end of the road where a tall spruce tree grew. He sent for some dry brushwood and branches and ordered for them to be put around the spruce tree. He set fire to the heap and climbed atop the tree. He started to whistle on his flute in a very high pitch. The snakes started to wind their way towards the spruce tree and most of them came from the house. They all died in the fire. But soon, the people heard something from afar, coming from the direction of the mountain peak Svetapec, to be exact, a piercing whistle that jarred every bone in the people who were near. The man on the spruce tree screamed, People run and pray for me, for I am lost there truly came a white snake, which was as fat as a long, wide wooden pole. It rushed through the fire and straight onto the spruce tree, so that the men fell down from it, and, together with the snake, died in the fire. 
they put a cross in the exact place in his memory. Number six. You're about to hear a personal recollection from the 17th century Slovenian historian Janis Vikard Valvasor on a type of dragon called a duhovin. Janis Vikard Valvasor reported that some women in the karst give birth to snakes. People then beat the snakes with birch branches until they transform into children. Valvasor lists several more examples of such births in the karst, pivka, Notrinsko, adding that although he heard much about this, he never came across anyone who'd actually witnessed such a birth. Valvasor writes, quote, They say that a duhovin still lives in the karst. He was born in such a manner, but for obvious reasons remains anonymous. Still alive is also an old woman who allegedly witnessed this transformation twice. As was noted by Valvasor, sometimes the snake could not be caught after birth. In this case, it disappeared. Number seven. Uh, the following is a personal recollection of the Slovenian folklorist Josip Pajak from 1884 about a type of zmei called a lintvert that terrorized his home region. It's been taken from the scientific research of scholar Monica Crope, called Supernatural Beings from Slovenian Myth and Folk Tales. In his hometown Prežigal, near Slovenske Konice, Josip Pajek heard people talk about a dragon that could be chased away also with the help of a priest, who would offer mass right when the creature came, or on a regular basis even. A quote from Pajek, The Lindvert lives in the marsh at the top of the Konice mountain. The parish church has to offer a mass every Friday to keep the Lindvert in the mountain. Still, it sometimes escapes, and violent fortuna, which is a storm, strikes. Number eight, Russia. Next is the Russian legend of Prince Volkov Shislavich, a warrior believed to have been a Zmei child, born from the love of a mortal woman and a Zmei dragon. The birth of Volka was unusual. His mother, Marfa Shislavivna, walked through the garden, and jumping off a stone, she stepped on a zmei, in the guise of which was Veles, the god. The zmei serpent coiled around her legs, and she gave birth to Volka, an infant with remarkable, unearthly power. At its birth, thunder struck from the skies, the sea rose and raged, the earth shook, the gods showed that a powerful sorcerer had come to be. A Volka's baby clothes were armor from Damask. A golden helmet lay at the head of his cradle, and a lead club was his rattle. Volka grew up a mighty warrior. His father, Veles the Zmi, taught him much wisdom. He knew how to turn into a falcon, so he could scout the battlefield unseen. He could shapeshift into a brown bull with golden horns. Come his fifteenth year, Volka began to assemble a party of champions as strong as him, and it was 7,000 strong that he gathered. At night, when his party of heroes fell asleep, to feed them, he'd turn into a gray wolf. He'd prowl through the forests, hunt hares, foxes, or he'd turn into a falcon and attack swans, geese, and ducks. Because of his May father and abilities of a protector, a Volka could be considered a Zmei Stupanin by Bulgarian traditions, or Zduhac, also Vetrovnik by Serbian. These are all terms for men who were believed to have an inborn supernatural ability to protect their estate, village, or region against destructive forces such as weather conditions. Stupanin is the guardian spirit of a location that we examined in our previous video. If you've had a listen, Number nine, Poland. You're about to hear the legend of the King of Poles 
and founding father of Krakow, King Krakus, who had to deal with the dragon Vavil terrorizing his capital. During the time of King Krakus, a dragon found its way to the cave atop Bavel Hill in Krakow on the banks of the Vistula River, destroying surrounding settlements, feeding on cattle and young girls. The dragon sowed fear among the people who lived in its vicinity. Therefore, the king ordered it killed. After many unsuccessful attempts by numerous knights, a simple shoemaker conquered the beast a man named Scuba. He came up with the idea to buy a sheep, soak its wool with sulfur, and then bring it to the creature as a sacrifice. The sullen dragon swallowed the sheep whole. Strong thirst overcame it. The dragon descended to the bank of the Vistula River and began to drink water in huge amounts, but in no way could this quench its thirst. When it just about drank half the river, the dragon exploded. In the oldest 20th century version of the tale, written by Vincenti Kudlubik, the dragon was defeated by the two sons of the king. What's left of the legend today is a cave known as the Smochayama and a fire-breathing dragon statue next to it. Number 10. Bosnia and Herzegovina this memory is from World War II and belongs to an old woman, but it was shared with us by Georgi Micic from Bosnia and Herzegovina, Republic of Srpska, who heard it in his village. This story I heard from some older folk from my village. There was one elderly woman who had an encounter with the Zmai dragon when she was young. This is her story. This event happened during World War II, the German occupation of our territories. German soldiers were going through villages and they were collecting all the livestock of the anguished people. They did this to feed their own army. During this dispossession, great torture was inflicted on the people by German soldiers. The next village on their list was our village so brother and I gathered all our livestock we had with an intention to hide it so the Germans wouldn't take it. So we headed to the forest with the livestock in the direction of one cave where we meant to hide ourselves together with it. While we were crossing one small river, I saw a strange light in the distance. When we reached it, I saw something large as if a lantern with a glow, but brighter than the glow of an ordinary lantern we'd use. I turned to my brother and said, Look how bright that lantern is. And he, quite surprised by the apparition he saw, responded, Sis, that's not a lantern, that's a dragon. All of a sudden, it took wing and flew over our heads. I don't know if I felt scared or amazed because I'd seen the real creature. It was like a sign, an omen, hope which all of us needed. In the end, the dragon was an omen of good indeed. The German army, before starting its plunder and torture through our village, was called back to their headquarters. That was the first and the very last time that German division came close to our village. Number 11, Serbia. Another family memory. This one was shared with our own channel's researcher by a close personal acquaintance, Nemanja Bojkovic. There's a story about how my twice great grandma knew one woman that was allegedly sick with dragon disease, which meant that she's been visited by a dragon and she's had a relationship with him. This implied she was constantly sick, pale, and with no will to live. A lot of people were seeing strange lights around the chimney of that woman's house. So people thought it was a dragon, since dragons use the chimney to get into someone's house and make love to the women from the home. This would have been taken as a rumor, mere gossip, had that woman not told my twice great grandma that a dragon was visiting her and that her children are in danger too. Her husband had died and she had three children with him. Also, 
She wanted my grandmother to avoid the house, because if not, her own family would be in the same kind of danger. Every time my twice great grandparents would walk through the village and get close to that woman's house, Granny would say to her husband, Blagoye, don't go in that direction. She's been visited by the dragon. Not long after, the woman shared her secret. One by one, her children died. In just a couple of months, soon after her children passed away, she also did. Since then, those strange lights around the chimney never appeared again. Found this video's creature interesting? See this man in action then, as a main character in these new works of Slavic authors and filmmakers we found for you. Osnoli Zmajevi, the book just premiered in Serbia, aka Sleeping Dragons, by Miloš Petković and Aca Celtic. Osnoli Zmajevi is an epic fantasy novel entirely based on Slavic mythology and actual locations with their local legends across Serbia. It follows a fellowship of Slavic mythical beings as they march against the dark forces of Crnbok. So if you've ever wondered if Lord of the Rings could be just as epic in a Slavic setting, yes it can. The stunning smiles you'll see inside the book are courtesy of illustrator Igor Krstić, who's also part of the circle of creative artists Ordo Draconish, based in, well, you guessed it, niche. Animations on our list too. New Bulgarian series The Golden Apple by Studio Zmei released its first episode, and it's all about Zmei life. Uh, the show's lead heroine, Vihra, is the daughter of the Zmei protector of Kukirovu city, and the city's mayor, a mortal woman. Uh, the show is jam-packed with any Slavic creature you can find on the Balkans, and also it has a team of supernatural heroes battling and befriending them to save their world. Think Cartoon Network's Samurai Jack, but with all that sweet, sweet Slavic lore in it instead. And Evil Aku is now Chuma, the plague queen of all sicknesses, laying siege to the world with an army of folk monstrosities. If it's witness accounts that have caught your eye, the 2016 collection of personal encounters with Zmeis, compiled by academic Vihra Baeva and her team of researchers, is what you're wanting. Their anthology, Zmei Zmeitsa Lamia Ihala, contains 575 pages of elderly people's memories of Zmei encounters from all around Bulgaria along with lyrics of folk songs and more. A live-action movie from 2015, On Dracon, a.k.a. He's a Dragon, is the Russian take on Zmeis. It has epic Zmei visuals and folk costume designs. If the Casanova side of this may got you curious, this is the movie to follow it through in. Links to each are in the description below. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned. There's much more to come.